With schools closed and many people working from home, the temptation to be out and about is there. But mayors in West Springfield and Holyoke are urging the public to take the threat of COVID-19 seriously. They're reminding residents to stay home whenever possible. In Holyoke, retail businesses with an occupancy of 50 or more are closed to the public until further notice. This does not include grocery stores, pharmacies, or pet food suppliers. Mayor Alex Morse made the decision effective at 5 p.m. last night, and it includes the Holyoke Mall. Morse and West Springfield Mayor Will Reichelt joined me in the studio to discuss. Things have been ever-changing and ever-moving over the last few weeks, and we actually convened our Emergency Management Advisory Council, you know, three three weeks ago in preparation for uh, this crisis worsening, and, and we've seen that happen. And so, you know, last week I announced a cancellation of the parade and the road race and the uh, festivities surrounding those events, and, and then yesterday uh, issued the order uh, that was uh, particular to the Holyoke Mall, but also other large retail establishments in the city. And so this was based on what's in the best interests of public health in the city of Holyoke recommendations from, from the CDC in terms of large social gatherings. I mean, we need to do everything we can to flatten the curve to prevent the spread of uh, COVID-19. And when you think about a place like a mall, other large uh, retail establishments, these are places where hundreds, if not thousands of people congregate, um, are close to each other, you know, touching different things. And so again, what we're seeing in other countries, um, and I, I still, <clears throat> believe that we haven't seen the worst of this crisis when you think about the number of days it takes to exhibit symptoms or be diagnosed a lack of testing uh, that people my age for example we may not be immune deficient or over 60 uh, but we could be the greatest carriers of the illness and spread it to other folks unintentionally and so i think it's important that and this is why yesterday we also recommended that people stay home if if they can and when you think about a place like a mall uh, we want to make sure that there's no incentives for people to gather or congregate at large establishments in the city what I've also recognized is, you know, this is a global pandemic, and so coronavirus COVID-19 doesn't stop at any one municipality's border, and so it really does require regional, statewide, nationwide, and a global response to this. And so I would encourage uh, other folks, too, to do everything they can just to prevent the spread. Yeah, Mayor Reichel, have you, as you've been looking at the issue, clearly not a mall in West Springfield, but a large number, several big box retailers that clearly are over the, the occupancy that the governor's recommended, you know, 25 are gathering in one place, 25, even from President Trump, we've seen 10. They mm -hmm. don't want people gathering uh, in groups of 10 or more. So as you're looking at this issue of retail establishments, what to keep open, what to keep closed, you don't have anything major closed in your city yet, but are you considering it? We actually are, and our Board of Health is meeting tonight to talk about a lot of the complaints we've been getting from different places that don't seem to be following the rules. And unfortunately, we're going to have to go down really the same path at some point. And, and we, we've been having conversations with retailers about, you know, grocery stores obviously are exempt, uh, but retail, while it's still open, needs to follow the 25-person rule. And if they're not going to, then we are going to take the actions and close them. Um, we're trying not to disrupt life as much as possible, but we're at the point now where I agree with Mayor Morris, where if you don't need to go out, don't go out. I understand people have time off and, and want to treat it as almost a vacation, an opportunity to get things done around the house, maybe the, the, the renovation you didn't get a chance to do, so you want to go to Home Depot, but that's not really what this time is for. It's to stay home and not interact with interact with as few people as possible. I saw that the Department of <clears throat> Public or the, the local DPH from West Springfield had posted something to that effect. This is not a vacation. Please don't be gathering in larger groups. The larger groups need to be avoided at all costs. So have, did your DPH, did your local public health notice that these gatherings were happening, that people were gathering in, in larger groups? They have, and we've been getting from complaints from people, like certain gyms that are, that are choosing to stay open and saying we'll let 25 people in at a time. But unfortunately, they're gathering outside and, and lining up, and that's really the opposite of what we want to have happen. Like, I guess there's only 25 inside, but there's 35 outside, all in line, all milling together, still interacting. So we're, take, we're going to be taking action to prevent that completely from happening. And really, it's just going to be grocery and pharmacies that are going to be allowed to stay open. Mayor Morse, for you, public health have uh, public health officials in Holyoke been going place to place to make sure that that 25 number from the governor of Massachusetts has been being followed, or have you not taken that step? Uh, we've made the, the message as clear as possible, and so we have limited uh, staff capacity to visit every business. Uh, but again, it's pharmacies, grocery stores, you know, Petco, there's an exemption because they provide food for 
uh, for animals in our community. Uh, we, you know, we did get some pushback from uh, a couple of tenants at the mall, and so we, we sent a team there last night to officially shut them down. And so employees on their own are, are sending uh, communications. You know, we have Corona Response at Holyoke.org, and we encourage residents of the public, if they have questions or concerns, uh, to flag that. And that is screened by my office, the Board of Health, and we get back with as specific of information as possible. And already in that email account, we've had people say, I work for this company. They're not abiding by this regulation. And that that, that allows us to deploy uh, proper staff resources uh, to address that concern. Mm. In terms of state response, we saw the governor roll out a suite of bills earlier this week directed at COVID-19. One was specifically for municipalities. Now, the state house the legislature hasn't acted on these yet, so they're not law, but they're proposed, and specifically uh, looks at municipal budgets. What do you think of the governor's response thus far? Yeah, I've been happy to see there's, there will be some flexibility with municipal budgeting in terms of, you know, lack of meetings for the city council. You know, the city may also have to expend resources, and that's why it was important to declare a local state of emergency to, to be able to apply for reimbursable expenses at this point. Um, you know, I, I commend the governor for his decisions. Um, I will say that I, I wish there was more guidance, both from the state and the federal government. I think what we saw last week with schools in particular was that superintendent and mayor and city by city were making decisions. And, you know, again, this isn't going to be effective if only one school district is closed and another school district isn't. And so I welcomed that he, you know, eventually uh, made the proclamation that all schools around the state would be closed. And I think, you know, now they're closed for three weeks. We're seeing other states and school districts closed for the duration of the school year. Um, and I think we're going to have to revisit whether or not that April 7th date makes sense. And so I think overall, uh, you know, mayors want to see more direction. But I think, if anything, this crisis has showed the importance of leadership on the local level, local boards of health. Uh, local mayors uh, and and just local leaders in general coming together to do the best that they can. Mayor I help for you. What do you think of the governor's response thus far? I think as long as they're going to give us the tools we need to help the local businesses, because that's the biggest complaints that I'm hearing from from small local businesses and their their staff. What you know? Can we grant waivers to not pay property taxes for an extra month or so, or can, whatever? The, 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 even individuals' property taxes and assessments. How are we going to handle that? Because when there's no money coming in, and eventually we're going to get to a point as communities where we can't pay our bills because we're not going to have money coming in. So I, I haven't seen enough about what's going to happen with that, and I haven't seen enough of the tools they're going to provide local businesses. I I understand it's an early early into the crisis. But those are the questions we're getting. We need to have answers soon because people are getting more and more nervous. And, you know, this is the second day of, of bars and restaurants being basically completely closed. Otherwise, other take for just takeout and delivery. But, yeah. but for some restaurants, they don't have a takeout the option. Like they there. don't. So, you know, as we move further into this crisis, as Mayor Moore said, we're probably going to have to revisit the April 7th date. We need to have answers for what's going to happen because people are just going to start folding up shop and leaving, and that's when we're probably going to see the crisis itself worsen at a local level. What discussions, if any, have you had with the superintendents in your respective cities about this issue? Have you talked about? Do we do just need to close through the end of the school year? I think we're really, really looking now to the state. Since they made that decision to close for three weeks, there's a lot of other things and other factors like MCAS and graduation requirements that are going to come into play that we can't waive at a local level. So as Mayor Moore said, we're doing as much as we can, but a lot of the stuff that's going to impact the decision to push anything further down the line has to come from Boston. Yeah. Mayor Morris, I mean, the CDC has recommended up to up to eight weeks. And so, again, I don't think we've seen the peak of this crisis yet. I think that's that's to come. And, and my intention is not to scare people, but we need to take this seriously. And if at the end of the day we say, well, we really, you know, there really wasn't much that happened. I mean, that's, that's the exact point. And so, I mean, we will continue to see cases and diagnoses go up as tests Testing become more available. Broader, yeah. I and mean, I will say in terms of small businesses, you know, I, I will have a call today with uh, our Chamber of Commerce and a number of small businesses just to hear directly their concerns. And as, um, you know, Will said, there are a lot of levers and resources uh, that we just don't have at the local level that the state and federal government have. And I'm happy to see that there's now conversation at the federal level for federal stimulus. You know, obviously the last thing I want to see are bailouts for big corporations like the airline industry, but uh, for just everyday people that are getting hit hard right now financially because they're out of work, because they rely on tips or their jobs. They don't have the privilege to be able to, to work from home and still collect uh, a salary. And so I welcome these conversations about, you know, direct payments to the American people uh, that compensate them for their lost wages. But small businesses are going to be hit hard. Municipalities are going to be hit hard. And we, we need to make sure that at the federal level, the response is actually geared towards those people that 
are, are most hit hard by this crisis overall. To your point about the federal piece, there is the possibility of a $1,000 check being cut to adult Americans. That's mm -hmm. on the table being considered. But to the piece about small business, people can apply to the state right now for some small business assistance. Mm -hmm. Some of that is contingent on the federal government coming through and helping Massachusetts. But as I understand the way that it's structured right now, there is some help for small yeah. businesses. There, right? there, is, there is some help. I know the governor announced a $10 million loan fund. Uh, number one, $10 million isn't enough. Number two, it's a loan. So businesses will have to pay it back. And so uh, a loan only helps so much. And $10 million, I mean, that could probably be spent in Boston alone. We're talking about 351 cities and towns across the entire state. And so um, I, I commend the governor for taking some action. But again, we need more action at the state level and, and more stimulus from the federal government. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the schools, we talked about it a little bit. But I know that meals were a huge concern for people mm -hmm. whose, whose children are getting at least breakfast, lunch, and sometimes even dinner or a portion of it through schools. I know the schools have arranged for some local pickup. How is that going? Are people taking advantage mm -hmm. of it because of concerns about being too close together or taking the uh, advice of, you know, stay home if you don't need to be out. So are people using these programs? Yeah, so on Monday we had uh, about 410 uh, meals distributed. Uh, and yesterday we had 372 meals distributed. This morning I was at Lawrence School um, as we kicked off the, the meal distribution program. And so people are using it. Uh, on Friday, we'll, we'll uh, provide families with uh, three meals uh, for the duration of the weekend, so folks don't have to worry about that. And we are adding a sixth site on Monday at Morgan School uh, as well. And so people are using it and want to thank the public schools and our teachers, our volunteers who are uh, staffing those distribution points. We also have local uh, food pantries that between noon and 2 p.m. are providing uh, packaged meals for just residents in general. And kids, no questions asked. You don't have to show a student ID. You don't have to you know, prove if a kid and a family need food, show up between uh, 8.30 and 12.30 at the six different locations in Holyoke. In West Springfield, are the programs being used? Absolutely. We're doing between 11 and 1 every day where you get a, a lunch and then a breakfast for the next day. Same thing in Holyoke, no questions asked. Just come up, let us know how many you need. We have 11 different sites. We're just do doing them by buses. So we prep everything in our high school and then spread it out throughout the community. Uh, and we've, we've seen, uh, yesterday was kind of, wasn't the weather wasn't fantastic, but we still had a great turnout. We expect even more as it gets further and the word spread. So it, parents are happy, the kids are happy. We, we use that also as a tool to spread out uh, work packets to as much as the, the state allows us to, to have so students have come some skill-based work to do at home. Uh, but it, it is a good tool, and our Meals on Wheels program for seniors is, is doing well as well. We signed up more at-risk seniors as we closed the senior center. And our food pantries are, are busy, and they're not doing meals at the food pantry. They're just handing food out.